when I drive to work, I try and park as far away from the office door as possible in the car park. And when I press the key fob on my car to lock it, it goes beep beep. And that's like my audio trigger. I haven't got a visual one anymore. It's an audio one. And I got the walk across the car park to get to the office door to go through that routine again. Which attitude are you picking today? And if you did it, what would be the benefits? But it was something that Hayley said to me uh, just after I'd nearly been run over by a big container ship. <laughs> and I was on the phone crying to her and she said, Debs, you know, you just got to choose your attitude about this. And I thought, if you were here now, I would punch you so hard. I think she'd just been on some annoying management training course and learned this. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. Those three words, choose your attitude. And I guess the reason that choose your attitude stuck was because n nothing, nothing else out there, I actually had a choice about. I couldn't choose whether I got attacked by a shark or whether I got run over by a big container ship or whether I got blown backwards 30 miles. But I could always choose the attitude with which I bounced back from those problems or the attitude with which I approached them. And I clung on to it because it, like it was like I just needed to be able to say this one thing, this is the thing that I've got control of in this otherwise crazy situation I've put myself in. And so I stuck Choose Your Attitude on the cabin hatch because that was what I faced every day as I rode. And it was like a visual trigger, a trigger that caused a reaction. And the, and the response, the reaction was that I had to sit by this at breakfast time and I would say it out loud to myself, come on, Deborah, choose your attitude. Which one is it going to be today? And I'd make myself pick one, although it had to be a positive one because negative ones were banned from the boat. And I'd sit there, and it was really hard to think of anything positive a lot of the mornings. And I'd be like, you know, today's attitude is one of optimism. <laughs> you know? But then the next bit was I had to list out loud all the reasons I had to be optimistic. So I'd think, well, you know, I suppose if I was being optimistic, I might pull harder. And, and then maybe I'll do more miles in this 24 hours than I've done on any other day. Or I might see some incredible marine life I've never seen before. Or maybe I'll learn three more Spanish verbs, because I had this stupid Spanish CD course with me. And generally, by the end of breakfast, I'd feel pretty optimistic, or whichever the one was I'd picked. And it was because I had a trigger that reminded me to do this, otherwise I would have forgotten. You know, I've, I've got a new one now. Um, when I drive to work, I try and park as far away from the office door as possible in the car park. And when I press the key fob on my car to lock it, it goes beep beep. And that's like my audio trigger. I haven't got a visual one anymore. It's an audio one. And I got the walk across the car park to get to the office door, to go through that routine again. Which attitude are you picking today? And if you did it, what would be the benefits? I always think by the time I get to the door, well, I really want those things to happen. So it's got to be worth at least trying it. But the reason I believed it worked was because I wasn't the only one to go solo. We all started with two people in the team, but I was the... I was the fourth boat to go solo. None of those other men's teams made it alone. I was the only one. And yet, if they were stood here with me now, you'd see they were big, strong guys. You know, they were very talented rowers. And I was none of those things. But I did choose my attitude every morning. And the one thing they cited as the reason, all of them said the same. The reason they didn't continue solo was because mentally they couldn't handle it. It was a head thing, an attitude thing. So even though I'm not particularly big and strong, and I genuinely, I couldn't row before I signed up for this, I did choose my attitude every day. And I can't help but believe that that is the one thing that really made a difference to me. And so I, I suppose I can't help but believe that of everyone now, that if we can choose the right attitude, and if we got the right people around us, anything, absolutely anything is possible. Go Reverend McGuire.